Hi guys, welcome to the unboxing and full review of this Beelink T34 mini PC quad core with an Intel Celeron N3450, uh, I mean N3450 processor. It's not the latest processor, but it's still a really decent one. Windows 10 Pro mini desktop computer with 8 gigabytes of DDR3 and 128 gigabytes of SST including 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and yeah almost everything uh, like Bluetooth 4.0 uh, dual HDMI port and so on really a lot of nice features it's listed for around 220 to 30 dollars or something like that it looks like that's the most capable mini PC I've ever had so I mean not the fastest CPU but I mean the completest package I've already tested some of them with uh, i mean i had a small one with 32 gigabytes and uh, an intermediate 64 gigabytes but still it's pretty small now this one has 128 gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of ssd and especially 8 gigabyte of ddr3 i think that's the most important part here because it's really difficult to add ram in such a mini pc so we really need one which comes with a lot of RAM uh, from the beginning and I think 8 gigabytes is a lot for a mini PC I mean it's not incredible a lot of people have 16 gigabytes these days especially for gaming but still 8 gigabytes that's really good for an office PC uh, in 2020 I think so uh, let's see what we get I mean it came uh, nicely sealed of course I've already uh, removed the seal here so this is what we get i have to put it down so here on top we have already the pc and you can see it's pretty uh, a small thing really nice but you can feel there's a lot uh, of stuff inside it's pretty heavy i've seen definitely more lightweight ones so yeah and it's really good protected it has this uh, film around so we remove this protection otherwise it can't get any air yes so here we can see the ports two times uh, usb then we have the headphone jack we have lan hdmi another hdmi we have the dc power on off here and yeah here's some uh, model description input we need 12 volts and can see everything here works from 100 uh, volts to 240 that's really good so you can take it with you worldwide yeah nice thing so uh, when you hold it in your hands you can really feel it's a nice thing and it comes with these rubber feet so if you want to put it beside your uh, tv or something like that uh, then uh, I mean wherever you want to put it it's a good thing so maybe this is a little bit too much uh, if you just want to use it for streaming but uh, if you want to have like a deluxe PC for streaming yeah why not but I think this can definitely work also for some kind of uh, office work if it's uh, not too demanding stuff here's some things uh, yeah the ma user manual there's probably not too much as long as you don't want to do stuff inside I mean here yeah I'm going to show you that pretty quickly maybe it could be interesting basic operation then back view and yeah precaution yeah that's it actually in English here we have other languages then you want to see uh, what kind of accessories we get here of course the power adapter and a few screws if you want to open that or mount it yeah I think that's a mount for a TV or like the wall or wherever you want to put that yes yeah, small small HDMI cable and a long HDMI cable really interesting maybe if you want to put it down on the sideboard or so you can use the long one if you want to mount it directly on your TV uh, then you're good with the super small cable I've never seen that it's interesting yeah 
uh, nice uh, add-on feature here. Yeah, here definitely the 100 to 240 volts, which you can see, definitely nice. Of course, for a worldwide travel, you would need a different uh, plug here, but at least the adapter itself is working. So I'm going to uh, install that and you can see how I set up the windows and then test it for a little bit with like browsing, uh, also online gaming, uh, check the specs. I mean, do a, I'm going to run an online test and see how capable the thing is configured and if this thing uh, really works. Yeah, so here we are. It's a little bit dark. Yeah, I've closed the uh, shades so you can see everything better on the screen then uh, because I'm not screen recording, of course. I don't want to interfere with the uh, power of the thing with screen recording. So I'm recording with the camera. So I have it here. Yeah, what I see already, the problem is a little bit. There are some uh, plugs here on the side, some in the back and some here and it's not very consistent. So I have now HDMI and power here and USB on the side so it's about, it was a little bit difficult to put the thing here so I had to put it on top of something to fit for the cables in front of the uh, screen yeah I mean it's a special situation here with me but apart from that it works I mean the ports were really super tight here that's the one for USB here the other ones are okay but the ones for USB they seem to be super tight here much more than usual I mean it wasn't really a problem to plug this here but I like it a little bit less tight so let's try uh, to turn it on yeah, because everything was mirroring so much, it's still doing here. But I think, uh, but I think you can uh, see it better from the side. So I'm recording from the side, still uh, heavily mirroring with this bent screen. But here you can still see, at least in the screen. Here's the computer, and here we have the uh, on-off button here. Yeah, where is it here? Yeah, hope you can see that here in the back. Yeah, lift it up a little bit. So you can see now I'm pushing here. So let's see, we have a blue light here. Hope you can see that. We have a blue light here in the front. Not much else, but we can see the B link here uh, in the screen. So that's good. So the thing is it has Wi-Fi built in. So I think we don't need ethernet. Uh, that's good, but we have to be careful uh, when we set up this uh, mini PC, I have been told that we should not connect to the internet right away before the Windows 10 is fully set up. That's really important, otherwise you could be in trouble. So make sure you do not uh, add your Wi-Fi uh, or router password. Yeah, now we can select language. Just normal Windows setup, so I don't have to show everything here. So you really can do everything, just do not uh, provide the Wi-Fi password here during this setup. So here we are, and uh, whatever you see, you click on skip here. Skip for now. Okay, that's the most important thing here we have to do. And uh, yeah, of course they will ask you uh, to do that and we say no. So there are two things obviously. Uh, and when you say yes, it will go back and then you have to provide the password. So we say no, we keep going with that. Of course, we have to accept everything here. It doesn't look too bad. So basically without talking or so, we would be here like after five minutes or so. Yeah, by the way, I've been trying to listen to the PC if we can hear some noise and there is very very few noise only i mean there's almost nothing that you can hear i think there is a fan inside when you go really close to that you can hear that there is something moving that's probably a really small fan spinning inside but uh, till now it's really very very quiet and here we are yeah, I mean, in real life, that would have been seven or eight minutes or so. And we are already on Windows 10. And yeah, we are ready here actually 
to go to the internet. I think everything is set up. We wait for security reason. Uh, we wait uh, two or three minutes till we are sure that everything is finished and set up properly. But uh, after that, now we are going to connect to the internet. So the first thing, yeah, before we do that, uh, before we connect to the internet, let's see uh, what uh, hardware information we find. Let's uh, type window and system and then uh, system information. Yeah, here, hope you can see that here. It's a little bit far away. Yeah, so I put the thing straight in front of the screen. Maybe now you can see it better, some information. And it's saying, yeah, X64 based PC. And uh, it says, of course, I uh, hope you can see that Intel Celeron uh, N3450. Yeah, that's exactly what we have been buying here. The, here the core speed, four cores. And yeah, here we have also the space installed, physical memory RAM, eight gigabytes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's what we want to see. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult to show you everything when I have the camera right in front of me. We have opened the Explorer, went to PC and it's saying 101 gigabytes free of 118 gigabytes. So that's uh, the C drive and uh, looks really good. We have plenty of space to install uh, the things. So I'm going to download Chrome. I'm going to download the speed uh, test uh, and then we'll go from there. And of course, before I do that, we have to log in into the internet. Hope you can see that we do this here on the yeah bottom uh, right here. This icon here, where you can see there's no connection. We have to click on that and find the right internet. You can see uh, 2.4 gigahertz, of course, is better for Wi-Fi because we have better Wi-Fi reach. I mean, you can go with five. 5 gigahertz if you are really close to the router but I stick with 2.4 so let's see how this works verify and connecting can't connect to this network maybe there was a wrong password so let's try again with the right password let's click on next and let's see if it can connect there's some sometimes there is problem uh, I've never found out. Usually it affects only uh, Android PCs. Uh, now it says connected secure. So uh, yeah, it looks like it was wrong password from my side. So my bad. You can see it's fully connected. It has four bars here, full strengths. Uh, yeah, now I can download. Uh, I mean, of course, we have to go to Internet Explorer first, and from the Internet Explorer, we go to Chrome, download, and then we go with the Chrome, and then we go with everything. By the way, since you probably will face same or similar issues as I do, I wanted to show you that here it's going. Uh, here it's saying, yeah, mm, can't reach this page and so on. But you can see uh, some pages can be reached. It just takes a lot of time. And yeah, here as well, site, site can't be reached or so. Yeah, so don't uh, panic, uh, don't uh, freak out, don't change everything. So uh, I think in the background, after we have been uh, connecting to the internet, in the background, there's a lot going on here, which we can't see. Microsoft is probably going to check everything, like the licenses and make some security patches, updates and so. Um, so probably the best thing what you can do after connecting to the internet don't do anything maybe for an hour or so and just let it run uh, everything in the background so Microsoft can make updates so or even when you want to check on updates you can go to the system settings here in the left corner here and then you can type something like system update yeah, here I've been typing system update and you can click on check for updates. I don't know if you will see that uh, check for updates. Maybe the best is if, if you check really actively on that. And so we can actively push this 
app updates and see what's going on we can uh, see then view update history and so on advanced options so i think it's going to take a while till we have everything so make sure you do all the updates before you are going to download chromes and download uh, office and uh, play games or those things so because they could highly be compromised i mean speed could highly be compromised because all these updates which are going on now uh, you really have to be patient here at the moment it's really uh, crazy here what's going on i think in the back uh, and, and and by the way that's not only if you have windows that's also like if you have like a new android system or whatever system you buy where you can uh, go online and have online updates it's everywhere it's the same just be patient with everything so the uh, performance will be very very bad and don't freak out don't send it back uh, immediately just make sure you give the system enough time to make all the updates even when it takes hours maybe sometimes it can uh, even take days depending on the internet speed uh, but I mean you have 30 days to return uh, and I highly recommend to really give the system enough time to do all the updates and then only then after that judge how good the system is yeah, it took some time to check for all the updates, but you can see that here what it's saying, your device is missing important security and quality fixes. So that's exactly it what I was telling about. Just make sure you have these updates here and make sure yeah, that you are connected all the time. I had to check here. Sometimes he was saying I'm not connected to the internet anymore. So I have to reconnect again. So maybe we'll have same issues at the beginning. So maybe it takes uh, some time till it gets stabilized with all the updates. So I'm not going to comment and show all the updates here. So I just leave it around. Maybe it takes a couple of hours or so. We have to really make sure I'm not going to explain the whole Windows, Windows 10 and so on. But make sure you have all the updates and make sure that you also have like a virus scanner. When you uh, type here on the left side for virus before you go uh, to the internet. So here's there's the window defender settings and uh, yeah you have to make sure that everything is activated everything is green here so you have you are protected against viruses and and all these things firewall and, and those things before you go to the internet here and everything is updated here if there's an update needed as well so here it's looking good actually there's no other uh, virus protection needed i mean not based on my experience i'm always going with the Windows uh, security or Windows Defender. So this is about half an hour later and it's still far away from being finished but I still want to give you an update on the current situation. Uh, what I have done in the meantime I have switched uh, from the wireless connection to wired connection so I've added like an ethernet cable here hope you can see that here's the ethernet cable but it's not going directly to the Wi-Fi router or to the router yeah, I'm using PowerLAN unfortunately I'm having a lot of equipment here installed so they are interfering with the PowerLAN but it's still better than the Wi-Fi so the uh, system updater is not complaining anymore and it's uh, now downloading some updates before it was not doing anything so here you can see now there are things going on and also the Chrome browser installation is now a little bit uh, proceeding so before when I was on Wi-Fi it was just too slow so when you are too far away yeah I think it could be a little bit a problem with the Wi-Fi speed so either you have to go with PowerLAN or maybe you buy an external antenna to this PC maybe yeah the housing could block uh, a little bit too much of the uh, Wi-Fi signals I mean I'm not saying it's not working at all but it could be uh, really a little bit blocked here from the housing by the way when you're talking about the housing here it's super hot here so you can definitely see that's got something going on it's probably running on highest power everything the good thing is it's still super quiet I mean we still can hear some kind of like fan spinning so I'm trying to be totally quiet 
and it's probably almost impossible for you to hear that and you could definitely sleep beside these things here it's so quiet but it gets quite hot so there's not a lot of uh, air like blowing out i can't i can barely feel some air here and that's the, probably the reason why it gets so freaking hot here it's really super hot and uh, yeah this thing is definitely not intended for long gaming sessions i mean anyway there's not much which you can do for gaming here but anyway yeah you have to know that it's getting hot i mean it's not uh, stopping from working so I've opened here the resource monitor and we can see uh, most of the work is now done by the Windows module installer worker and so it takes alone a lot of CPUs you can see everything is busy all these CPUs are busy memory yeah also a lot and disk yeah not so much going on here a little bit network of course yes but CPU is definitely uh, doing a lot of work here and uh, it's almost at the limit so so no big surprise that it's heating up like crazy but but it doesn't seem to be throttling or so uh, I haven't seen any warnings or so but uh, it's it's difficult to get any warnings yeah there's another thing uh, when you think uh, updates get stuck what you can do you can reboot the PC uh, when you see there's nothing going on here or it looks like there's nothing going on here I mean here when it says currently installing I wouldn't do anything yeah here like installing 20% but but when it looks like it's not doing anything but still not complete yeah I highly recommend to do a reboot that's always good yeah here I'm running the open hardware monitor you can see the CPU load is almost 100% all the time it's just coming from the up update here but the temperature is only 65 degrees which is okay pretty much okay I would say still the I mean the surface of this PC is very hot it's ultra hot it's I mean I, I can barely touch it it's around 45 degrees 115 degrees Fahrenheit yeah so it looks like super hot you think okay it's close to explode no for me it looks like in a very safe area I and mean, we see this 65 degrees celsius so i mean i have seen way higher temperatures on my laptop but we keep it running and check after that okay so that's about two hours after we started the whole update process and you can see you are up to date everything is okay that is really looking good this is how we wanted to have it and now we can start to test and uh, work and do whatever you want so here i've run a cpu benchmark the good thing is again the cpu i mean of course we had a lot of cpu load gpu load everything uh, of course but the temperature was still below 60 degrees maximum during the install update process the maximum temperature uh, was around uh, 65 degrees celsius so also on a really healthy level so i'm not going to scan that more because it also needs uh, some power but it looks like temperature is not an issue even when it gets super super hot i mean when you touch it you think okay it's a uh, flaming hot it will uh, explode soon uh, catch fire whatever no it doesn't i mean 65 degrees is still on a very good level i've seen way higher with other cpus so uh, from my side it doesn't look too bad even when the housing gets very hot so i'm closing this here and i've been running a cpu benchmark i mean the most uh, famous one from userbenchmark.com and here you can even see that we'll put down the link then yeah i can't do that <laughs> so i have to write it down after that of course because i'm not logged in but the number is user run is 299 O nine seven four nine. so you can type it in and check it out if you want to see that so here are the performance results yeah gaming it says it's a tree trunk yeah this is what i've been expecting as a desktop it would work as a sailboat and as workstation it would work as a surfboard so you can see really light uh, use so no heavy stuff and here the recommendations and especially uh, regarding graphics what's really disappointing is a little bit the processor i mean yeah even though i haven't seen high really high temperatures yeah the cpu is definitely it says uh, performing way below expectations 
and graphic card also performing below expectations and the drive is good I mean there are a couple of good things we have the SSD performing way above expectations we have the memory kit also performing above expectations and that's about it you can check everything if you want to see more details I'm not going into that I have seen this benchmark running for different uh, CPUs I mean diff different systems and every time I did it it was a little bit, it, it was showing a little bit different results here uh, could be that it, there is still something running in the back and we don't see it and Windows doesn't show it to us Yeah, could be so I'm going to test now how it runs uh, Online like with a browser and a couple of games and other things Yeah, and so here we have already some results. That's a screen recorder pre-recorded video, which I'm commenting now that's the Crazy Games, Rebel Forces, that's uh, some 3D first person shooter which is supposed to run also on low performer PCs and as you can see it's almost doing nothing so I'll run this video in real time and commenting and you can see it's not even one frame per second sometimes it didn't do anything for a couple of seconds so it was not even possible to move around really properly see anything so no chance to hit anything or anybody so I just uh, yeah I got shot and then quit so so next thing which I tried was then Google Earth so I mean the Google Earth plugin on on the Chrome browser which is not a bad thing and also can be run on low performing uh, computers usually so here we are but you can see uh, it's not running really good it's really difficult to zoom in move around so I've been trying to locate Paris and uh, some of the site things uh, locations but um, yeah it's almost impossible so i forward a little bit here you can see how difficult it is of course it's a big city and uh, yeah of course a challenge but uh, yeah it was a huge challenge for this pc and actually too much so uh, definitely below my expectations you can see it's really super slow i mean google earth usually is doing a great job even on these pcs and uh, yeah it just didn't really work uh, nicely so then i moved on to normal google maps like 2d and then switch to the um, satellite image and then later to 3d so here you can see zooming in also really really slow not much going on i'll uh, fast forward a little bit here to the image and you can see like uh, yeah pre-recorded images that's working uh, pretty good but it's it's not actually 3d it's just like a 360 degrees image and not too much impressive then i zoomed in a little bit more and went into 3d mode but also was taking long long time and uh, very laggy so i'll forward a little bit as well here takes just too much time to load here we are finally after long long wait and uh, yeah you can see this um, carrier here at least that was then uh, more or less nicely animated uh, that's not bad at least uh, that's that's pretty good so far at least you can do something but it's not really really impressive yeah I mean you can really work with this PC uh, as long as you don't have too high expectations you can definitely do some office work you can do some browsing you can do also some very basic 3d things but don't expect to be able to really run 3d games or so it's just not capable enough i mean the eight gigabytes of ram are really good the 128 gigs of uh, like storage are also a really good thing but at the very end the cpu is just not performing uh, as it should be i don't know why 
uh, yeah I think it was not really uh, throttling because it was not really overheating even though the case was really super hot so I don't know where the problem really is yeah that's it for now I cannot really recommend that uh, to buy but at least I hope I've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments just write to the comment section below and I'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching and see you next time Thank you.